Sample Collection from Animals for Influenza A Virus Isolation Live bird markets are usually located in urban areas where a variety of birds such as chickens, pigeons, quail, guinea fowl, pheasants, chucker, partridges, peafowl, ducks, and geese are assembled. These markets are widespread in Asia and are also found in northeastern United States. In the United States, turkeys are also sold in the live bird retail markets. The practice of housing many species of birds in the same market with continuous throughput of birds provides optimal conditions for amplifying and perpetuating influenza viruses. These markets can become reservoirs for influenza viruses. In live bird markets, permission must first be obtained from officials in order to enter the market for the purpose of sampling animals. Permission must also be obtained from stall owners prior to sampling or handling birds. It is important to be sensitive to the market and store owner since sampling animals can have an adverse effect on their livelihoods. If permission to handle the birds is not obtained, collect water samples and fresh fecal samples from underneath each cage. For the purposes of this video, environmental sample collection was done in an animal facility under experimental conditions. Using a dry, sterile, calcium alginate tipped swab, collect freshly deposited fecal droppings, making sure to heavily coat the swab with feces. Place the swab in a screw cap file containing transport media. Break off the shaft of the swab so that the cap can be screwed back onto the vial. Immediately place the sample on ice. Samples should be kept moist and cold following collection and until they can be tested for the presence of virus. When it is possible to collect water samples, use a sterile, needleless syringe to collect one milliliter of drinking water from each cage. Eject the water into a screw cap vial and immediately place the sample on ice. Note, samples collected from under cages are labeled as environmental samples, since fecal samples from adjacent cages can mix and the source of the sample can be uncertain. It is important to record the type of birds in each cage when environmental samples are collected. Influenza viruses replicate preferentially in the intestinal tract of birds. Therefore, the best samples for influenza virus isolation from live birds are cloacal swabs, although tracheal swabs should also be collected. For the purposes of this video, swabbing of the chickens was performed in an animal facility under experimental conditions. Materials needed for sampling animals for influenza virus include dry, sterile, calcium alginate tipped swabs, sterile screw cap files, 1.0 milliliter of isolation media containing antibiotics for each cloacal swab, 0.5 milliliter of isolation media containing antibiotics for each tracheal swab, and ice. Prior to sampling birds, personnel should don personal protective equipment, such as gowns and gloves. This is the minimal personal protective equipment. However, if possible, head covers and face masks should also be worn. Take the chicken from the cage and have someone hold the animal. If animals are tagged, check the wing band or leg band for the animal number. Label two vials with this number and designate each one either trachea or cloaca. 
also record this information on a field data sheet. The trachea is easily recognized by a white ring of tissue near the base of the tongue. The chicken may close the trachea between breaths, but wait until the bird takes another breath and opens the trachea to swab. Insert a dry, sterile, calcium alginate fiber tipped swab into the trachea and gently swab the inner wall of the trachea. Place the swab into the screw cap file with isolation media. Break off the shaft of the swab so that it will fit into the vial and screw the cap back onto the vial. Place the vial containing the swab on ice. Locate the cloaca near the tail feathers. Insert an unused, dry, sterile swab until the fiber tip is not visible and gently swab the cloaca. Place the swab into the screw cap file with isolation media. Break off the shaft of the swab so that it will fit into the vial and screw the cap back onto the vial. Place the vial containing the swab on ice. Again, it is important that the samples be kept moist and cold. Moist and cold. The samples can be kept at 4 degrees Celsius for up to 48 hours after collection. If samples are to be held longer, they can be kept at minus 70 degrees Celsius. Place the chicken back in the cage. Observe the birds before leaving the area for any abnormal conditions. Following the 1997 bird flu incident, all live aquatic birds were removed from the traditional live bird markets in Hong Kong to separate live bird markets where they are sold, killed, and chilled. Again, as with the traditional retail markets, permission must be granted by officials and market owners prior to sampling birds in these markets. Sampling of all birds is done in a similar fashion. Take the bird from the cage and have someone hold it. If the animals are tagged, check the animal number and label the vials for this animal with that number. If animals are not tagged, assign them a number and also record as much information on the field data sheet about the animals sampled as possible. The trachea is located at the base of the tongue. Insert a dry, sterile, calcium alginate fiber tipped swab into the trachea and gently swab the wall. Locate the cloaca near the tail feathers. Insert an unused, dry, sterile swab until the fiber tip is not visible and gently swab the cloaca. Place the bird back in its cage. Pigs are naturally infected with two subtypes of influenza viruses, H1 and H3. Although they are susceptible to experimental infection, with all subtypes of avian influenza A viruses. Pigs are viewed as an intermediate host in the interspecies transmission of influenza. Thus, influenza in pigs is of concern to both veterinary and human health. The primary route of transmission is the nasopharyngeal route, since nasal secretions are laden with virus during the acute febrile stages of the infection. The best sample for virus isolation is nasal mucus obtained from swabbing the nasal passages. Again, materials needed to perform this procedure include dry, sterile calcium alginate tipped swabs, sterile screw cap files, 1.0 milliliter of isolation media containing antibiotics per pig and ice. For the purposes of this video, 
sampling from pigs was performed in an animal facility under experimental conditions. Two people are required to perform this procedure. Before entering the room where the pigs are housed, each person should don the following personal protective equipment. Shoe covers, isolation gown, gloves, head cover, and a face mask. A face mask is important because influenza viruses can easily transmit from humans to pigs as well as from pigs to humans. Collect the pig from the cage and restrain it by holding its feet. Insert a dry, sterile, calcium alginate tipped swab into the pig's nostril while continually twirling it. The swab should be inserted so that it passes the basal fold, the flap of skin at the nostril. This ensures that the nasal turbinates are being sampled. Remove the swab from the nostril while continually twirling it. Then repeat this action in the other nostril. Place the swab in a screw cap vial containing isolation media with antibiotics. Break off the shaft of the swab so that the cap will fit back onto the vial. Place the vial containing the swab on ice. It is important that the sample be kept moist and cold. The sample should be kept at 4 degrees Celsius for up to 48 hours after collection. If the sample must be held longer, it should be kept at minus 70 degrees Celsius. Place the pig back in the cage and observe it to make sure that it resumes normal activity. In slaughterhouses or on dead animals, tracheal swabs are the best sample for isolation of influenza A viruses from pigs. In slaughterhouses, scientists are only given the entrails of the pigs. Enter the trachea through the epiglottis. Swab the wall of the trachea. Place the swab in a screw cap vial containing isolation media with antibiotics. Break off the shaft of the swab so that the cap will fit back onto the vial. Place the vial containing the swab on ice. For all samples collected for influenza A virus isolation, it is essential to record the type of animal sampled, type of sample, location of the sample, and date of the sample. Remember, samples obtained from underneath cages are called environmental samples since the source animal is usually uncertain. Influenza field data may be collected and recorded on a form similar to the one found in the WHO Animal Influenza Training Manual. All samples once collected should be transported immediately to the laboratory where they are inoculated into 10 to 12 day old embryonated chicken eggs for virus isolation using the procedure described in the WHO manual. Samples from pigs are also inoculated into MDCK tissue culture as described in the WHO training manual. In summary, clinical samples taken from animals are an important source of data for surveillance. The best samples for influenza virus isolation from live birds are tracheal and cloacal swabs. Although fecal swabs can be collected for virus isolation if permission to handle birds has not been obtained. For mammals such as horses and pigs, the best sample for virus isolation is nasal swabs.